Alright, the gym kit creative level is finally done. And by now, it's probably one of the most complicated things I've ever made. Just take a second to admire the beauty of all these wires. And it keeps on going. Oh yeah, that's a lot of them. It's even lagging my computer. I finished all five rounds, added the first, second, and third system, and the leaderboard ranking system. I've even added a single player mode, where you can replay each puzzle as many times as you want by yourself. This is the part that takes up the most wires. You see this laser over here? Well, it's not just one one laser, but it is actually 10 different lasers stacked on top of each other. Each one can have 6 wires going out of it, so there are 60 wires that reset the last puzzle every single time, and that definitely took a lot of effort as well. There's even these buttons that take you right back to the puzzle selection screen if you chose the wrong one, but those weren't too hard to add in. Once you start it, it takes you to this screen that counts the current number of players, and if there's only one person in the game, it takes you to single player mode. If there's 2 or 3 players, it takes you to the final round, or to 6 players, it takes you to round 4 and so on. Let's play through puzzles 4 and 5 since you haven't seen them yet. In single player mode you have to answer 5 questions just to get access to the path and now here's the puzzle selection screen. Let's do puzzle 4 first and you always have to go through this laser to reset the level and now we end up here. This counter only applies to multiplayer so it's really just irrelevant for single player and if this was a team round there'd be more lasers here and once you hit these yellow lasers they just disappear and you can move on. Once again with these wooden blocks there's one floor and multiple walls. Well it's actually symmetrical. There's a floor block here and a floor block here. This is just to make things more fair. And then you get to some sort of maze. To deactivate the green zones, you have to press these buttons. Here's the second one, and then the final one. And if this was multiplayer, the first team to have everyone make it would move on to the next round. And then we return to single player mode. Once again, we gotta answer five questions first. So let's do that really quick. And there we go. It's a bit of a slower setup in case something bugs out, by the way. I have a faster setup, but sometimes it doesn't work well. And since you can't close out of the question answering screen. I don't want people getting soft blocked because of that. So yeah, let's move on to puzzle 5. Let's do it. Here we go. So you start off here, everything seems normal. This maze thing is basically the same as round 1, except this time there are tiny little shortcuts you can take. The fastest route through this long maze is actually going here, then here, then here instead. Alright, quick update. I decided to remove this shortcut right here. So now you have to go this way, and then you can just follow that path. A really small change, but I just wanted to point that out. Then you've got this area with the zones that are represented by text. If you touch one of them, you get teleported back. You go around them and then you move on. This part's pretty simple. You just go here, then through that. And then here's where it gets interesting. When you go over here, everything changes. This is suddenly a Mario Kart style map. You go around this way to complete laps. And if you thought you could go the other direction, well, too bad. You can't. You can't even do it from here either. You just get trapped here. Once you complete three laps, you move on to the next section. So here it looks like you're at the end. But when you go through here, you're hit with a surprise question. And then you answer. And now it's the end, right? Well, unfortunately for you, it's not. Here you can open the path right now and just go through this like normal. There's two added barriers here. And this time the zones don't take you back there. They teleport you to here now. So you have to cross them again. And yes, this also applies to every single player. There isn't a way to make zones only active for certain people. They're either active or not. But regardless, you go through the maze again, around here with this added barrier, through here, and then you hit this laser and you teleport. You're almost there, keep going. Here are these blocks again. And as you go through them, you'll notice your speed is getting a little bit slower. This is just to create suspense. And then you finally reach the end. We can even demonstrate this with three players. Once there's three players, you get teleported to here instead. You also get teleported here with two players. And as a group, you have to answer a total of 12 questions to unlock the next path. And once you do that, you go to the final round. By the way, this button opens the path for everyone. But once the first person presses it, no one else has to. So I have test two going first place. And up here it says, congratulations, please wait for results. And then I'll get second and we'll see what happens. The results are in. In third place is test one with 100 cash. Second place goes to me with 200 cash. And in first place, test two, getting 500. This is really our scoring system. And the leaderboard at the end shows everyone. Let's even add test three into this. So now there's four players in the game. And when this happens, you teleport into the fourth round where you are as an army of between four and six people have to answer 20 questions. Wow, not cool. The tests are around doing nothing. I just gotta do all the work. And then we randomly pick the teams like you're seeing right now. It evenly picks two teams of two. So here's what I mean by there being more lasers. And these have the 
same rules to them. And these lasers deactivate for everyone, as you can see from this visualization. So to test it out, we'll have the bottom half qualify and the top half will be out. So let's say I make it for team 2. And also once the buttons are pressed, no one else has to press the buttons. They just never get deactivated. Here's an update, now the buttons deactivate. Now let's say test 3 makes it for team 1. Now both of these players have to hope that their teammate qualifies before the other one. And once test 1 makes it for team 2, both the players on the bottom just received 50, as you can see by leaderboard. And the other two are in spectator mode now. So that means it worked perfectly. Let's have a quick look at the introduction too. For best results, play this game in full screen mode by the way. And we've got the multiplayer and single player roles, the multiplayer setups for how many people qualify each round, the memory this project took up, the start and date of finishing, and even a way to report bugs. A little bit of decoration in these rooms shouldn't do anything bad. Let's do some simple for this one. Maybe we'll do some like this. Alright, not bad. Let's add this shape, some to the middle, make these wall blocks, and these can be floor blocks. And we really need decoration for this one too. Now I might run out of ideas. Might do a similar thing for the other area. I don't really know, we'll just add this. Alright, one more thing. Alright, one more design to decorate. Now what to do? When the view at the wires is not obstructing anything, you can see it clearly. I'm gonna add one more thing real quick. I gotta give players a reason to answer some questions. You can also earn an in-game dollar for every single question you answer correctly. Just to incentivize collecting it a little bit. Let's do it. Item grantor. Let's put it down here. And one dollar. So answering a question from any of the questions earns you a dollar. Except for the one behind this barrier that's in the middle of the second round. These are just required questions anyways. Let me go put that up real quick. This one question is really holding too much together now. You can think of this whole thing as like a game show. You get a bonus prize for every question you answer correctly. And once we put in the last one, the whole thing is complete. And yeah, this whole thing is complete now. Before we end the video, let's say they did build a little setup for two player finales. And yeah, that definitely works. I have nine, test one has three. That just shows the number of questions answered. Wait, I just realized that the reward's gonna apply to this, as well as this up here, since they both utilize this thing down here. Yeah, I have no idea if I'll fix that, but I probably won't. Alright, actual test run. Actually, I might think about removing the last decoration a little bit. Alright, this whole thing's working. And when there's a two-player finale, this happens. When the first person goes in, the game just resets automatically, like this. In third place is nobody. Second place goes to test one, getting 200. First place is myself, getting 500. It still works. So leading the blocks of that decoration it's gonna be so stressful. There's just too many wires. Oh no, this could go wrong so many ways. I think I did it. Okay, I got rid of it successfully. Now it's just this middle area, which I don't care about. I think the other four decorations are fine though. I'll leave them in. And yeah, that's pretty much it. There's a couple little easter eggs that I hid. I might have accidentally shown some of them at some point. But if I didn't, then you can try to find them yourself. I'm gonna have this up for a little bit to test things out. And if everything's fine, then we can start the official release of the game. So you can access it using the link in the description. And until next time... Wait, I need to move this back inside the rectangle. Alright, there we go. Much better. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.